What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how you can fix the issue of the error establishing a database connection with your WordPress website. This is something that can happen with any database driven website and the steps I'm going to show you here are going to be good for the vast majority of databases and especially for WordPress. All right, so why does this happen? Well, there's a couple of reasons why you might see this. Uh, one, you might have the uh, incorrect login credentials for your database in your WP config file. Your database might be corrupted. You might have corrupt files within your WordPress installation, or there might be issues with your database server. Now, some of the steps I'll show you will be some very basic steps you can take to test out your database and see if you can correct it. And I'll be using a couple of tools. One of them will be an FTP client like FileZilla. If you're using a hosting account that comes with a control panel like cPanel, then you can log into your cPanel account and get your database credentials from there. And if you have a bare bones server without a control panel, I'll show you how you can uh, repair the issue there as well. Now, ideally you'll have a full backup of your website from the files of your website, which includes the uh, WordPress software itself and the active themes that you're using and plugins that you're using on your website. You should also have a backup of your database as well. It's very important to keep fresh backups in case any issues happen. You can always restore from a backup. If you wanna see how to use the uh, duplicator plugin to create a backup of your website, I have a video for that and I'll leave a link in the card section above. So if you need to log into your control panel, just go to your web hosting account, log into your account, and then you're gonna often see that there's gonna be a section that's titled maybe cPanel or control panel. So you're gonna to wanna to click on that. Once you're in your cPanel or your control panel, there's a couple of things you're going to want to do. You're going to want to get your FTP credentials if you don't already have that. So you can do that by going to the section that says FTP accounts. Once there, you can either create a brand new FTP account or you can just scroll down to the bottom and you can get your FTP account credentials here and you can get information on how to configure an FTP client. Now, another thing you're going to want to do is get your database credentials. So for that, I'll go back over here to the main page for cPanel. You can go over to the PHP My Admin section, and this is a good idea to uh, take a database backup of your website as well. Once you're in PHP My Admin, you should be able to see your username, and you can scroll down to the bottom. If you want, you could always check all, and then over here, you can try to repair the database tables over here. Once it's done um, repairing any database tables, you can go back to your browser, see if that resolved any of the issues. If it did not, then go back. Make sure you export your database. You want to make sure all the uh, tables are selected. You want to use the compression method of zip. Then scroll down, then click go. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is go over to your main cPanel section. You're going to have the file manager over here. Click on that and it'll take you over here. From here, you could do a couple of things. One, you can check your wp-config file right here and you could view it scroll to the section that has your database information which is your database name your database username and your database password make sure to keep note of all that another thing you could do is you can also use your ftp client and in this case i'm using filezilla so from here once you log into your web server with your user credentials you could download either every single file of your wordpress powered website which is what I recommend. This gives you a good backup of your site, or you could just download the wpconfig.php file itself. And then you could edit the file in your favorite text editor. For this demonstration, I'm gonna be using the Atom text editor. So you would open up the wpconfig.php file. And what we're gonna do here is use a snippet of code that's gonna enable us to repair the database via our web browser. So we can go down to the section that has our database information. I'm gonna place it below this section over here paste it and what we're doing is we're creating a constant with define wp underscore allow underscore repair make sure you have the uh, parentheses open and closing one and then you want to have your single quotation mark the opening one and then the closing one over here with this snippet right here then you put a comma and then put true at the end of it and make sure you close it off with the semicolon from there you can save the file then you can go back to your ftp client reload it and then you could upload that file to your web server and we're going to say to override it once that's uploaded go back to your browser open up a new window and then from here you're going to put in your url followed by the forward slash then wp admin forward slash m a i n t forward slash repair dot 
PHP. And then press enter or return. And then you're going to see this screen over here. You can repair the database and you can repair and optimize the database. So we can uh, click this option right here, allow it to run its process. And once that's done, what you're going to want to do is make sure you delete that snippet of code that I gave you because you don't want people to have access to this file. So in this case, since I uploaded the file via FileZilla, I'm going to show you how to edit the file using your cPanel. So I'll go here, I'm going to reload, go to wpconfig.php, click on code editor, click on edit. And now we see the uh, snippet of code right here. So I'm going to just take this out and then save changes. I'm going to go back to the other browser window. We're going to see if everything worked. If it didn't, then we move on to the next step. So now I'm going to go back to the uh, other browser window. From here, what I'll do is go back to the file manager. In the root of the directory, what I'll do is I'll create a new file. I'll click this icon over here. I'm going to call it testdb.php. Then I'll create new file. Then I'll click on that, go to code editor, then edit. And from here, I'm going to show you some code that we could use in order to uh, test to make sure our database connection and information is correct. All right, so you're going to need your database username and the database password that you have in your wp-config file. We want to make sure that this is working. And if it's not, then we know that that's the issue and we could reset it. So I'm going to paste in the snippet of code here. Double check your syntax is correct. You're going to want to put the opening PHP tag there. And then you're going to create a test variable assign it the value of the MySQL underscore connect, opening and closing parentheses. Inside of there, you're opening and closing single quotation mark. Localhost will typically be the first value used there. Then your database username, then your database password. Just remember to always have your comma separating each item within this section here. And then inside, you're gonna to wanna to have the uh, single quotation marks, and that's where you put your username for the database. And then over here, your password for the database. And always make sure to close off the uh, parentheses and the, and then have your semicolon right here. And then over here, we'll have the if conditional. Inside the parentheses, we'll have the exclamation point. So if the test variable does not work, because the exclamation point negates that, then we're gonna issue the command to uh, die. And then in the parentheses, we'll have the uh, MySQL error, and then the MySQL error right here. Make sure you have your syntax exactly the way it is here. And also take note of your curly braces as well. And then if this is not true, if the database does connect, we're gonna echo out the uh, statement, database connection is working properly. And then we're gonna close the connection. So then save the changes, and then open up another tab. And then over here, you put in your URL, forward slash, and then the name of that file, which in this case, we chose the name of test db dot PHP. And this is the result you want to get. Database connection is working properly. So if you do get this, then that means you have the correct user credentials for your database. If you don't, then what you're going to want to do is go back to your cPanel. Then you can go to the MySQL databases. Then you can take a look at your current database. Make sure to copy your username. And then you can scroll down. And if you need to change the password, change the password here. Make it a good, strong password. And then copy that and then use that within your wpconfig.php file and then try it from there. Now we're going to go back to our file manager. And since we saw this worked, we're going to take this testdb.php file. And we're going to delete that. And then if you're still not able to um, access the front of your website or the back end of your website, and you've tested out the other options, then the next step is going to be to potentially replace the WordPress files. So in order to do that, go to uh, wordpress.org forward slash download, press enter, download the latest version of WordPress. Once you downloaded the zip file, go to your file manager. You'll see the zip file here. You'll need to extract it and extract all. Wait till the process finishes. Once it's done extracting, you're going to get the WordPress folder here. Open that up and you're going to want to also open up another uh, file explorer. So I'm just going to open up a new one. I'm going to put them side by side. And then on the left hand side, I'll go to the section where I have the uh, local version of my um, WordPress website. So at this point, what you're going to want to do is take the WP-admin folder 
from the fresh version of WordPress that you just downloaded. Copy that folder, then go to the backup version of your website. Delete the wp-admin folder from there. Do the same thing for the WP includes folder. Bring it over here. And then you're gonna wanna also do the same for the other files that are here. The one file you're gonna wanna make sure not to bring over is gonna be the uh, wp-config-sample.php file. You don't need that one because you're gonna keep your wp-config.php file here. And then you also wanna make sure to keep your HT access file as well. So you're not gonna delete these, you're just gonna replace the ones that are on this side with the fresh versions that you just downloaded from wordpress.org. Just make sure to keep your wp-config.php file here. You're gonna wanna not delete that one because that's vital for your website. And again, the same thing for the HC access file. So once you replace all those files, you go back to your FTP client, you could reload, and then you just upload those files to your web server. You can just uh, click one, then control or command A to select all, right click, and then upload. And then you would just, uh, and then you would just have all those files uploaded to your web server. Now, if all else fails, then you most likely have a MySQL issue on your server itself. Maybe the MySQL server is not working properly, or you have some issue on your server that needs to be resolved by your hosting company. So at that point, contact your hosting company and see if they can resolve the issue for you. Or if you're using a bare bones server, a VPS server that you fully control, then you can try to deal with the issue yourself. So this can be something you do on your Linode manager or your DigitalOcean um, account. You would just go to your user dashboard and then find a section that says reboot. So we'll reboot the server here. It'll ask you if you wanna seriously do this. Click on yes. Then it'll run through the process of shutting down your server and then starting it back up again. And sometimes this will fix any issues that might take place on your server. Just like your computer at home, a web server is on a computer, albeit a very powerful workstation based computer that typically doesn't need to be restarted, but every now and then it doesn't hurt to restart that server. And it might correct any issues that you might be facing. And once you reboot your server, just go back to your website that has the issue with the error establishing a database connection, then reload from there and see if that resolved the issue. Now that's the beauty of having a self-managed VPS where you can control the server itself. You don't have to work with a middle person like the hosting service. You could just log into your dashboard and reboot the server. Then check that everything's working okay. And we seem to be okay. Now another thing you could do is you can go to your terminal and you could restart your MySQL server from there as well. So to do that, I'm gonna use my virtualized environment. From here, I'm gonna SSH into my web server. Then you have to put in your password. Then press enter. And then you'll be logged into your web server via the command line, via terminal. So once there, you're gonna wanna make sure you update all your server software. So I'm using the command sudo apt update and with the double ampersand, sudo apt upgrade, then dash y. Then we gotta put in our password again. Then press enter. And it'll run the process of making sure everything's up to date and upgraded. Once that's done, I'm just gonna clear the screen here. And from here, we're going to restart our Apache server. That is the web server you're using for your website. So I'm going to use this command here, sudo systemctl reload Apache 2, then press enter. And then it should reload your Apache web server as well. And that should take care of any issues within your MySQL server or your web server overall. All right, so just to recap what we covered, uh, we covered several ways that you can actually repair your database. One of them is by using a snippet of code that you would upload to your wp-config.php file, which allows you to repair your database. The other one is to make sure your database credentials are correct by creating a test file that we call test 
db.php. And then we also attempted to repair our database via PHP My Admin. And then I showed you how you could also replace your WordPress files by downloading a fresh copy of WordPress and replacing the core files. You just want to make sure to keep your wp-content folder because that's what holds your theme and your plugins as well as your uploads uh, which are your images as well and you want to make sure to keep your wp-config.php file and your ht access file and then if all that failed then you could contact your hosting provider and have them restart your web server or you can log into your vps if you have a self-managed vps where you could restart your web server from there or you can terminal into your web server and then restart apache from there as well so those are the main ways that you can fix the issue of ever establishing a database connection in wordpress from some very simple procedures to a little bit more complex but that should cover the vast majority of issues you might face with your database just always make sure to try to keep a backup of your files and your database if you blog once a week take a database backup once a week just to make sure you always have a fresh copy of your database and also download all your files either using your favorite backup plugin and i have a video on how to use duplicator which is a great plugin that helps you back up your website and also migrate your website and again i'll leave a link to that in the cards so check the upper right hand corner or you could use an ftp client like filezilla in order to download all the files from your web server to your computer all right so hopefully you found this video helpful if you did give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe hit that notification icon if you have any comments thoughts or ideas leave them down in the comment section below share this video with anyone you feel might benefit from it and if you want to learn how to code your own custom wordpress theme check out my theme development course here on youtube i'll leave a link in the cards and you could also get the training theme called DevWP over at pixelweb.com. And I'll leave a link in the description section below. All right, again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.